Now there's just too much information here to try to cover everything. So when I go through this portion of the menu, I'm going to assume that you have a working knowledge of a speed light. If you do not, I would highly recommend my speed light DVD. This portion of the video deals specifically with using your built-in transmitter for wireless flash. Now when you come into this menu, there are a ton of confusing symbols and letters and numbers and brackets. So the best way to do this is to teach you how to read these guys. This icon, which sort of looks like a barking robot dog, represents an off-camera speed light which has been set to slave mode. The clam-like icon represents the built-in flash on your camera. A colon represents ratio control between two flash systems. A plus sign means that these flash units will be functionally working together as one flash system. Letters such as A, B, or C represent different flash groups, which means you can have one or many speed lights in a group behaving as a unit. You're also going to see many different types of brackets. The short answer on this is that they allow you to control flash power. Flash exposure compensation is typically used to describe one flash group and it is measured in stops. Ratio control is used to describe relative brightness between two flash groups. And then we have the manual flash output power. This is measured in relative total power. 1 over 1 being full power and 1 over 128 being the weakest. Now as a side note, keep in mind that ratios and stops are equivalent. A ratio of 8 to 1 means that one flash will be 8 times brighter, which is 3 stops more than the other, because one stop is twice the power of another. And so when you say you have 3 stops, what you're essentially saying is 2 times 2 times 2, and that's 8. So now that you know the language, you should be able to figure out just about everything you see in your wireless flash menu. To use your built-in wireless transmitter, Activate your flash, go into your menu, bottom of the first red tab, and select flash control. In this example I'm using ETTL with evaluative metering. Now there are a ton of different choices and icons in here, but for the most part they do not matter until you select which wireless feature you want. The first one is a speed light, and then a colon, which means ratio control, and then the built-in flash. So interpreting this, it really means that this will allow us to control the ratio between a speed light and our built-in flash. You know, I'm not a huge fan of the onboard flash, so I never use it. Next, we have just a speed light icon. This is the one that I use the most. It should be interpreted as triggering your speed light only, with no onboard flash. However, as of this recording, it is impossible to completely turn off your onboard flash. And to prove this, just take a picture on the setting looking into a mirror and you will see the onboard flash firing. You can turn it down with exposure compensation if you would like to limit the effect, but as, as far as I know, there's no way to completely turn it off because the signal fires with the flash. Now this last setting shows a speed light icon, a plus symbol, and the onboard flash. And What this translates into is that all of your flash systems will be working together as one. This will be a little confusing because you still have ratio control, but it will allow for multiple speed lights in multiple groups, and it's more of an advanced setting. If you're a beginner, there's really two exercises that I would recommend using the built-in transmitter. The first is one flash ETTL control, which means you're going to want the single speed light setting, and you just, you're just going to take your speed light set it to wireless slave and if you push your picture styles button while you're in the flash menu this will fire a test flash and you should see your speed light firing what I would recommend doing is taking some test shots just moving your speed light around now you should make sure that the red panel on the speed light always faces towards the camera because this is how they communicate 
but move the flash around different distances and I would also recommend changing the power from the flash menu. This will allow you to control the flash power without having to go over there and fiddle around with it. If you're lucky enough to have two speed lights, the next exercise I would recommend is doing some manual flash control. And what this means is you're going to go up to your metering and you're going to change it from ETTL to manual flash. A really cool thing about this is that your speed lights do not have to be turned to manual. You can leave them on ETTL. In fact, you have to leave them on ETTL if you're using manual flash power from your camera. Man, this sounds so confusing. But you're going to leave them on ETTL, and what I would do is I would leave one on group A and turn the other one to group B. And I'm going to show you an example of a picture I did here with uh, model Terra. We had one flash off to our right and one flash behind her. And because these two flashes were, were with different groups, I was able to control the brightness of one and the brightness of the other independently. This was all done through the menus. And you can move this slider around, change the power. So it, it becomes a very quick way to change flash powers without going over and playing with the, with the speed lights. So that is a really quick crash course on using the wireless transmitter on your Canon 7D. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you found this video helpful, you may be interested in my new DVD, Canon 7D Crash Course, which has over three and a half hours of helpful lessons. I'll teach you the basics to get you started to great photography and video in no time. It can be ordered from the following link.